Hello, good morning children. Welcome back to the online session of Sri Gogulam Public School Budwai. Children, we are here with a new chapter today. Chapter 6, Staffing. As you know, we have completed the functions of management like planning and organizing. So, here is the third function of management that is staffing. Now, let us discuss about this chapter. Here in this chapter, we have to complete the concept like uh, concept and importance of staffing, staffing process, recruitment process, selection process, training and development, concept and importance methods of training that is on the job training and off the job training. Here is the concept of staffing. After planning and selection of the organization structure, the next step in the management process is to fill the various posts provided in the organization. Staffing simply means putting people to jobs or finding the right person for the right job. We can also mention staffing as a function of management which is concerned with obtaining, utilizing and maintaining a satisfactory and satisfied workforce. Staffing is the managerial function of filling and keeping filled positions in the organization structure. So this is what staffing is all about. It is about filling the vacant position or we can say it is putting people to job and finding the right person for the right job. Now what are the importance of staffing? So these are the five importance of staffing. Let us discuss one by one. Obtaining competent personnel. Here competent means a person who have the ability to do all the work. So, proper staffing helps in discovering and obtaining competent personnel for various jobs. So, it is only through staffing that we can discover and obtain a person who is well suited for our job or a person who can do the job in our organization very well. He should be a competent person for various jobs. He should be capable enough to perform various jobs in our organization. So, only through staffing process we can discover a person. Then, higher performance. Proper staffing ensures higher performance by putting right person on the right job. So, through this process of uh, staffing, we can appoint a right person who can do the right job. So, a person who can... Uh, do the right job he can uh, that is uh, we can expect a higher performance from him so thereby increase the um, profit of the firm also so a person who is capable of doing almost all the job at the right time so such a person have to be appointed so that we can ensure higher performance from him and thereby increase the profitability of the firm the next concept is or importance is continuous survival and growth. Proper staffing ensures continuous survival and growth of the enterprise through succession planning for managers. So, staffing means what? We are appointing the right person for the right job. So, that we have to continuously do because if there is a place vacant for an employee who is doing a particular job, then that work will not proceed in his absence. So, for a survival and growth of the enterprise, we have to appoint a right person and fill the vacant places. Okay. So, that is a continuous, um, that is, it is important for the continuous survival and growth of the firm. Next is optimum utilization of human resources. Proper staffing helps to ensure optimum utilization of human resources. By avoiding overstaffing, it prevents underutilization of personnel and high labor cost. At the same time, it avoids disruption of work by indicating in advance the shortage of personnel. So, the, through the process of staffing, we can come to know how much person is required for a particular work. So, we, we will not go for over. Um, that is staffing also and understaffing also. The both is not good. If we go for overstaffing, what will happen? We have we will have to unnecessarily pay a, the high labor cost on that staff. And if we go for understaffing, what will happen? If there is shortage of person, what will happen? Our work will be disrupted. So the both both is not good for the organization. There should be an optimum 
uh, utilization of human resources educate staff should be there in an organization so this is one of the important the next point that is the last point of importance of staffing is improves job satisfaction and moral of employees proper staffing improves job satisfaction and moral of employees through objective assessment and fair reward on their contribution so this process uh, is such uh, done in such a way that through proper training and development and career uh, opportunities given to the employee there will be increase in their job satisfaction and moral of the empl employees will also increase okay so if we are going for a proper staffing that will improve the job satisfaction and moral of the employee and uh, through objective and how can we do that through objective assessment we have to assess this performance of this employee and reward them for their contribution by doing so we will increase the job satisfaction of the employee and thereby increase the performance of them uh, which will automatically contribute to the profit of the organization so these are the these are the five importance of the next what we have to cover in this topic is the staffing process staffing is a process through which it is ensured that right people are available at the right time doing the right job so staffing process have various steps as shown below let us discuss each of this point in brief the first one is estimating manpower requirements the first step in staffing is to estimate manpower requirements to carry out business activity to uh, so to do a particular business activity how many staff are required or how many employees are required that is estimated that is the first step okay so this estimated should be made estimates should be made both function wise as well as level wise so uh, uh, in doing a particular function that is marketing function or sales function how many persons are required as well as in each level of organization how many staff or uh, manpower are required so on that basis estimates are drawn then uh, the estimates of manpower requirement should be based on the organization strategic plan this is also considered while estimating the manpower requirements so this is the first step of planning that is estimating the manpower requirements how many persons are required for doing the particular job or task next is recruitment under this sources of recruitment are identified and candidates are attracted to offer themselves for employment so recruitment is a process in which we invite the candidate to offer for the job there may be internal sources and external sources which we will uh, study in detail in the coming classes at the recruitment step an attempt is made to attract as many as candidate as possible so that more options are available at selection step so recruitment process is such a crucial process in which uh, if it is not done properly then we will not get enough selection of candidates so if it is done uh, in such a way that we attract more and more candidate for the job then uh, we can make a selection and select one which is best suited for our uh, business or um, for doing that particular task or job after recruitment we have to go for selection selection is a process of choosing the most suitable candidate out of several available candidates so after uh, recruitment when we get number of applications we have to select one which is best for our job okay the choice is made in the light of selection criteria laid down for specific position for specific position uh, there are certain selection criteria based on that we make the choice of the candidates after selecting the particular person for the job the next step is placement and orientation in this step the candidate who are selected are placed on their job so the person or the candidate who is selected they will be placed on their job okay so for which job they are selected they will be placed and their duties and their responsibilities will be introduced to them now what is orientation these candidates are new to this job so we will introduce the working place uh, the uh, people working around there in uh, the business or um, that organization or company we will introduce this person to all um, all the staff so before this staff wo start working in the organization an orientation program is organized by the organization to provide relevant information to the new recruits so the new re recruited person he will be given relevant information uh, uh, for doing his work properly and he will be introduced to all the staff as well as to the working place in which he is very new okay the next step is 
ട്രെയിനിങ് ആൻഡ് ഡെവലപ്മെൻറ്റ് ദിസ് ഇൻവോൾവ് പ്രൊവൈഡിംഗ് ട്രെയിനിങ് ടു എംപ്ലോയീസ് ഫോർ ഡെവലപ്പിംഗ് ദർ റെലവൻറ്റ് സ്കിൽസ് സോ ദിസ് പേഴ്സൺ ഹൂ ഇസ് അപ്പോയിൻറ്റഡ് ഹൂ ഇസ് ന്യൂ ടു ദിസ് ഓർഗനൈസേഷൻ ഹി വിൽ ബി ഗിവൻ ഇനഫ് ട്രെയിനിങ് റിക്വയർഡ് ഫോർ ഡൂയിങ് ഹിസ് വർക്ക് എംപ്ലോയ് നീഡ് ടു ഡെവലപ്പ് ടു ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് സ്കിൽ ദോസ് വിച്ച് ആർ ജോബ് സ്പെസിഫിക് those which can be used in present job as well as future jobs so in both this area he should he should acquire the skills so three, through training and development only that can be possible the next one is performance appraisal under this employees performance is evaluated at the informally or through use of structured form which is designed by the human resource development uh, department that is uh, hr department uh, they the appraisal they uh, evaluate this particular employee okay result of appraisal of performance is communicated to the employee concerned with suitable suggestions to overcome deficiency if any so after appraisal of his performance uh, the employee will be communicated the area where he needs correction okay and certain suggestions will be given to him so that he can overcome his deficiencies so that is through performance appraisal steps next step of staffing is career planning and promotion career planning involves charting out career path for employee through which they will move upward in the organization so if uh, the organization is a big organization there will be many career opportunities uh, available to this employee so uh, career planning involves what charting out career path for this employee in which he can move upward in the organization and what is promotion promotion involves placing an employee at a higher position as compared to his present position so based on his performance uh, he will be uh, given promotion with uh, which is actually a higher position with higher responsibility also so promotion involves placing an employee at a higher position next step is compensation and this is the last step of staffing process this step of staffing involves deciding suitable compensation for the employees compensation refers to money and other benefits received by an employee for providing services to his employer so for each company there are different compensation packages available so it actually refers to money or other benefits which is given to the employee by the employer for the service of the employee so this is the eight steps of or we can say eight process of staffing recruitment recruitment is the process of searching for prospective employees and stimulating them to apply for jobs in an organization so recruitment is referred as a process in which the organization they search for the employees so that they can fill the vacant places and they stimulate them to apply for the jobs now there are sources of recruitment there is both uh internal as well as external sources of recruitment internal sources are transfer and promotion and external sources of recruitment are nine so let us discuss each of this internal and external uh recruitment sources in detail internal source of recruitment so here actually what happens is the vacant places are filled by the existing employee itself so there is a rearrangement of the existing employees there is no number no increase in the number of employee in such a uh, source of recruitment that is internal sources the main two internal sources are transfer and promotion now let us discuss about transfer and promotion transfer transfer involves shifting an employee from one department to another department from one shift to another or from one place to another without changing his nature of job so in uh, this type of internal source of recruitment we are shifting one employee uh, um, from one department it may be from one department or from one shift or from one place to another place and there is no change in the nature of the job no change in what what sort of job he is doing in that there is no change only the place or the time or the department where he is working will change without any change in responsibility salary and status uh, there is no change in his responsibility no change in his salary or no change in his status only only the place shift and department will be changed so this is internal source of recruitment so within the organization uh, within uh, the employees we are selecting and filling the vacant places now promotion 
Promotion means shifting or placing an employee to a higher position, carrying higher responsibilities, facilities, status and pay. So both these terms are different. Okay, transfer there is no change in responsibility, salary and status. But in case of promotion, there is a higher position. Uh, 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 employees place in a higher position with a greater responsibility, higher responsibility facilities as well as status and pay. So this is the two different internal sources of recruitment. Now let us discuss about the merits and demerits of these internal sources of recruitment. Here are the merits of internal sources. Efforts required for developing them through training are reduced because many training and development efforts are not required. Here because the employees selected from within the organization, so most of the training have been taken place or uh, he is well equipped with the play, workplace or the type of work which is involved. So very uh, less effort we have to take related to training of such an employee. Second point is it helps in adjustment of surplus staff in those departments where there is shortage of staff. So if uh, in uh, there are more than one uh, branches for this organization, so and in case uh, there is need of staff in uh, one of the branches, then the surplus staff can be shifted to the uh, in that part of the branch where there is shortage of staff. So uh, in this case, it better we go for internal source of recruitment. Next advantage of uh, internal source of recruitment, it is an economical source of recruitment as no time and money has been spent on advertising uh, of vacancies or conducting any test or interviews of this such employees. So very economical source, no spending of money or time is involved here. Then it motivates employee to improve their performance because promotion is being given and uh, so it is a sort of motivation to the employee to perform well. So that is one advantage of uh, selecting an internal source and filling the vacancies. Then the fifth one is recruitment from internal sources leads to simplification of recruitment and selection process as candidates are available internally. So very simple with very simple process of recruitment and selection uh, we can appoint um, a candidate from internally itself because we are well aware of that employee and we know about his uh, uh, that is um, uh, how uh, how uh, performance how well he is performing we are well aware of his ability and capability uh, so we can appoint him without much uh, effort so it is a very simple uh, procedure we have to follow for internal sources so these are the merits of internal sources now there are some demerits also related to internal sources let us uh, see it one by one the first one is it is an incomplete source as no organization can fill all its vacancies from internal sources see uh, if it is a organization is a big, big enough there are number of works taking place or number of activities taking place in an organization so complete uh, that is uh, filling of vacancies using this internal sources is not possible so hence it is known as incomplete sources okay the next one is the spirit of competition among the employee may be hampered because employees are likely to expect automatic promotion by seniority because uh, sometimes the employees uh, will feel that as on the basis of seniority will they will get the promotion hence that uh, the spirit of competition among the employees will not be there uh, so that is one demerits. Next one is it reduces the scope of fresh talent. We know that many uh, whenever a new student enters after uh, his uh, studies, he is equipped with new knowledge and new ways of doing the work. So uh, a fresh talent, if we are selecting from internal sources, that fresh talent will not be there. So uh, we have to recruit. If we are going for external sources of recruitment, then we will get a fresh talent. A new enterprises cannot use internal source of recruitment. That is also a demerit. Uh, new enterprises which is starting, starting its uh, business for the first time, they cannot use this internal source of recruitment. There is limited choice of candidate. As we have to make choice from the, um, from the candidate which are working there in that organization, so there are limited choice of candidate available. From that limited choice itself, we have to select uh, a suitable one who can fill that vacancies. So this is the demerit for the internal sources of recruitment. Okay. So uh, I hope you have understood the internal sources. There are two sources of internal sources of recruitment that is transfer and promotion, and these are the merits and demerits re related to these internal sources of recruitment. Now the external sources of recruitment as we mentioned earlier there are nine sources of recruitment in this external source. 
let us discuss one by one direct recruitment a notice is placed on the notice board of the factory or a, or company or an organization and a job seekers assemble and selection is done on the spot itself such workers are called badli workers payment on daily basis daily wage basis are provided to such type of workers they are suitable this uh, type of recruitment is suitable when there is a rush of work or some permanent workers are absent so in uh, when we have to complete any work urgently uh, so we have to appoint a uh, few more workers or suppose a permanent workers is on absent he is uh, leave on that day or uh, he is on leave for some days uh, so we have to Uh, replace that workers with somebody new uh, new worker in that case we can go for direct recruitment okay so uh, this type of uh, recruitment is done in case of labors and all that uh, semi skilled or skilled labors for this type uh, uh, skilled worker work we go for direct recruitment now next is cash casual callers a company gets applications and uses them when the vacancy arises so as we as you all know that whenever a uh, advertisement is given uh, so the uh, company receives number of application and bio datas so they will keep those bio datas they will select one or two uh, as as per the requirements they will select the fill the vacancies and they will keep aside these bio datas for future reference so whenever they need in they need or uh, there is more vacancies they will call from this Uh, uh, list of applicants which is kept kept aside, so that comes under external sources of recruitment. Next is the advertisement. Advertisement in newspapers or trade journals is used when a wider choice is required. Most of the senior positions in businesses are filled by advertising on TV or internet, etc. So this is also one way of ex uh, source of uh, uh, filling the vacancies uh, when. we have to fill the vacancies for senior position in the businesses okay so at, uh, advertisement televisions magazines or newspapers and uh, these are different choices available now next one is the employment exchange so government has uh, established an employment exchange in most of the cities it help in the recruitment of unskilled and skilled operative jobs so once you finish your uh, studies or graduations and uh, as you get qualified uh in your studies you can uh you can apply yourself in the employment exchange and they will uh they will uh, call you whenever uh, a job opportunity is ahead uh, according to your ability or your qualifications uh, if there is any job opportunity then they will call you so this is the uh, employment exchange okay you have to update update your uh that is uh, update your qualification whenever you are attaining any higher studies and you have qualified your higher studies graduations or uh, post graduation according to your uh, uh, that is upgradation you have to update your information in the employment exchange also that is also required so this is also one external source of recruitment that is employment exchange the next one is the placement agencies and management consultants so uh, placement agencies compile your bio data of a uh, large number of candidates they uh, take up the large number of can uh, bio datas uh, of uh, candidates and recommend suitable names to their clients they charge fees for their services so placement agencies are there as well as management consultants are there there to help the organization to recruit the technical professional and managerial persons so these agencies and these consultants they work Uh, uh filling the gap between the candidates and the organizations okay now next one is the campus recruitment you may have heard about this in campus recruitment employees organize employing organizations uh, visit campuses of various academic institutions offering relevant courses the entire selection process is performed at the campus itself now the seventh sources of uh, external source of recruitment is the web publishing so web, pub web publishing is an internet based electronic mode of external recruitment so we use internet internet to recruit the uh, or to fill the vacancies job seekers apply on the basis of job openings given on the website so whenever there is a vacant place so job seekers they apply uh, for in the websites and employing organization 
shortlist suitable candidate from this website itself nokri.com you have may have heard about this so they they have the list of candidates who wants the job and as per the call from the employing organization this uh, job seekers will be short uh, shortlisted now the next type of external source of recruitment is the labor contractors so labor contractors they maintain close contact with the laborers and other unskilled workers organization may use the service of these labor contractors to fill suitable vacancies mostly for specific period so some contractors they will have uh, some set of workers unskilled workers or laborers and whenever there is a need for work or need of such employees these contractors may fill the vacancies as per the requirement and for the specific period now next is the employee recommendation present and the former employees of an organization may recommend specific persons suitable for employment these persons may be family members or friends also so present or former employees uh, they can recommend a suitable person to fill the uh vacancies um, they may be their family members or even the friends also so as per the recommendation of the employees the vacant place can be filled up so these are the different sources external sources of recruitment now let us see the merits and demerits of external source of recruitment management can attract qualify attract qualified persons so uh, through external source of recruitment we can get a qualified set of persons then the management has a wider choice while selecting people from em for employment we saw that in internal sources there are limited choice but in case of external sources there are wider choice because we are calling uh, from a wide pool of people okay we are inviting a wide number of people uh, to um, um, that is uh, offer themselves for the job then it brings fresh talent in the organization so fresh talents are also invited uh, when we are going for an external sources of recruitment next is it develops competitive spirit amongst existing staff so the existing staff in the organization there will be a sense of competition among them uh, spirit will be there to work more to perform well okay so these are the merits related to external source of recruitment now let us see the demerits related to external source of recruitment it may lead to dissatisfaction among the existing staff as it reduces their chance of promotion because we are filling the vacancies from the external source it may create a dissatisfaction we can say in the uh, existing st staff okay so uh, that will be a demerit the second one it is a very costly process as lot of money is spent in advertisement and and um, processing of applications also so this all is very costly process and it is a lengthy process also it is a time consuming and a very lengthy process that is ex recruiting uh, staff or filling the vacancy from the external source of recruitment is a very lengthy and costly process so these are the demerit related to this source of recruitment now let us conclude today's class today we saw what is recruitment its definition we saw and we saw that there are two sources of recruitment external internal sources in which there are two main types transfer and promotion and external sources in which we have studied nine different types of uh, sources so hope you will uh, going you are going through the textbook regularly reading the pages which we are uh, dealing with in the lecture classes attend the test paper attach along with this session and a youtube url is also provided so that you can have more information related to this uh, topic meet you in the next class with a new uh, process of staffing that is selection till then goodbye take care